Okay, so I'm ready, I think. I've got everything in place. Uh, this is what we're going to create. So I've opened up NetBeans here. I've just put it on, a, on the startup page. Uh, we're going to need some files. I said that we would need some files. So in my downloads area, I've also created a new folder, Tutorial 11. We're going to need the Softlayer API. So download it from this address on GitHub and that will give you the uh, PHP one. I'm just going to download the zip and once that's ready in downloads there it is and I'm just going to pop it into tutorial 11. Here we go and the other one can move to the trash. Uh, next up is jQuery. I said that you would need jQuery again. Go to jQuery.com, downloads Download 211. So here's two. Compress for production. That's the one we want. And that gives us jQuery min. Go to download. And I'm going to pop that in there as well. Good. So we've got jQuery. We've got software. Um, now I want to set up the actual project in NetBeans. So, file, new project. If you're not familiar with uh, NetBeans or any of these tools, it doesn't really matter. Um, this is really just adding a framework around and making it a little bit more real what we're actually doing here. So, I wouldn't worry too much if you're not really familiar with HTML or CSS. I am going to be cantering through this, but you know it doesn't really reflect on the use of the APIs what I'm trying to do is show how you can actually construct something using the APIs that is really useful for you so this is going to be a PHP application um, I'm going to call it uh, tutorial 11 I need to have it on my machine in library web servers web server documents and click finish that'll do so I'm going to minimize everything else here's tutorial 11 we're in there uh, what I'm going to just check first is do a PHP info and make sure we got PHP running I know I do but again you might want to do this to check that you've got PHP running so I'm going to save that and what that allows me to do is if I open up a new page on my browser here is go to localhost and this is tutorial 11 and there's our PHP info so there we go that's what's running on my local machine we're happy so now we need to create this site so you know first things first I guess let's just quickly hammer out the HTML just to get the structure of the site looking pretty much the same as it is there um, So to do that, I'm not really again. again I'm going to be quick here. So I'm going to just crash through this. So let's just put a, um, a first div in place around the overall container uh, Let's just call it container I'll make this the uh, the main container. So that's our first div. Then we're going to have the um, that will be the overall container, the grey area. Then we're going to have a header. So I'm going to put in another div for the header. And within that, we've got um, the actual title of your site and then a logo. So, okay, let's, uh, let's give this a span. Let's call this tutorial 11 so we can differentiate it 
that'll do. And then we need an image. IMG white. I think it was called white internet png. Okay, let's just do a quick save. Now in here we've said that we've got a folder called img and in that folder img we've got white internet png. So I'm going to find that in my old one in the image. I'm going to just take it in here. So let's go to our one and see what we've got. Tutorial 11 and somewhere over here, yeah, you can see it, is the actual white image. That's fine. It doesn't matter that we can't see it yet. So that's the header done. Um, next up is the main menu. So we want to have this menu here. So, class main menu. And that's got navigation button, but it's also got unordered list in here, and it's going to be a block list. That's fine, we'll hit that in a second. Massive menu item, or I'll call it that class, and for now we're going to have show account, show users, okay, so show account, I'm going to just cut and paste this, show users, show machines, and this will be make a virtual machine. Lovely, that'll do. And then once that's done, I guess the only thing left then is to have the results area, because we want to present the, um, when we get output back, um, we want to present that. So call that main view. And in main view, whoops. We're going to present it in a paragraph. That's fine. And then we just want the footer. Here we're going to have a span. So what have we got in the main footer? Yeah, we're going to have the copyright. Um, I mean, it'd be the easiest thing in the world for me to copy this over, but it's good for you to see how this actually built up, rather than just presenting a fait accompli and saying, "There you go, it's all done. Congratulations." Um, at least you can see it interactively being built. And if you if you carry along with this then you will end up with exactly the same on your machine rather than just downloading the code and installing it. Um, oops. Uh, I want to span there but then I also want another span and this one's going to be um, main contact info. It's going to be a real hack now. We got breaks coming and everything. Um, this is going to go nowhere. And we want to send an email if this gets clicked. So we want to do a parent application.
and our subject is going to be um, uh, tutorial 11. Okay. Do I already have the span closed? No, I don't. Let's just reorganize these so they look a bit better. Okay, fine. Okay, so how does tutorial 11 look now? Fine, okay. Got our bullets, we got the the information at the end and that is literally that for the HTML we're going to return to this and put in forms here um, to actually get some action out of this but I just want to get the page set up at the moment so for the purposes of time in the old one we had a CSS now if you're not familiar with CSS then it is basically the styling around what we've just written so there is a relationship between all of these items, so main controller. This tells it, main controller, where to position it, uh, what its background color is, and what the font color is. So if I start taking pieces of this, I'm not going to take all of it, I'm just going to take pieces just to show you how it builds up. So I'm going to take the top of it first and I'm going to go down to our tutorial um, I'm going to create a new folder CSS and in that folder I'm going to create a new file which is a cascading style sheet file I'm going to call it simple no I'm going to call it tutorial 11 just to differentiate it it'll put the CSS in there I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to just paste that in yeah so I'm going to save that. Now we need to tell our HTML file that we're using a style sheet. So in our actual um, HTML file, in the header, we need to tell it that, uh, oh, I'll give it a title. Why not? Title for the page, tutorial 11. And then I need to tell it that I have a, um, a style sheet. So I need to link to it. It's, it's an odd one, this, in terms of HTML. You get script slash script, title slash title. Uh, with link, it seems to just stand out on its own. Um, tell it it's a style sheet. And then tell it, oddly enough, through a href where the actual style sheet is. No doubt there's a reason for this. Um, you know, image has SRC for source. Uh, script has SRC for source. Um, href, or sorry, link uses href. What can I say? Um, we called it tutorial and it's come up there, it's actually seen it. And then you've got to close the actual um, open bracket. And there we go. So that's given us our background. So you can see how the styles start changing the way the look and the feel is. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with CSS, it's, it's no big deal. Um, this is just step by step then the main con controller and the header section let's just take those in and see it build up slowly save that file so we're telling it something's going to have a black background here we've got a color of black and the background color is a, is a light gray so let's refresh again lovely so it's starting to look like something you might recognize like the other side um, let's take all of the rest of it in right down to the footer and then we can just have one last look at it okay 
So that's awful. That looks absolutely incredibly awful and doesn't look anything like this. So why is that? Well, that's because I've used jQuery here, which is why I said download the jQuery library, not just to come up with the sizing of things, but it does it based on the size of the screen, so that as you change the size of the screen, you get this responsive effect, so that your site will always look like this, because it's working out the dimensions of all these boxes as it goes. So in order to do that, and again, this isn't a tutorial on HTML and CSS and jQuery, this is about using the APIs, but we want to have a nice looking white label site. So for the purposes of speed, I'm going to just go in and take the JavaScript um, file, simple site, and I'm going to move it down into a new folder for JS, and then I'm going to copy it in. So now, again, I need to tell my, in the header, I need to tell it I'm using a script. So to do that, I say script, and the type is, it's a JavaScript, and its source is in JavaScript, and then I might as well just stick with simple site. Yeah. And this time you get a close, and then do an actual close. Let's see what effect that has had. Absolutely none. And it won't have because we haven't yet taken in our jQuery library. So in here, I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to take that into my JavaScript area in here. Now, probably in, in you know, if you're doing this properly, You'll have a libraries area rather than just sticking it in the JS, but for now that'll be fine. And then I'm going to copy this line and I'm going to say, whoops, you got to do it before your other script. Pick that up, jQuery. And now if I reload, hey presto. So jQuery has actually worked out all the dimensions. Let's go and have a look at how it's doing that just very quickly. So at the very start of our jQuery file, we have a function, resize my site. And again, this isn't the best jQuery in the world. Um, it's not you know, the most fantastic program, but it just gives you the idea of what it can do and the power of using jQuery and JavaScript. Um, I've grabbed the window width and the window height. I've worked out the font based on width times height. Um, and then for each one of our identified areas, so the main container, I will work out the width of it and the height of it, and then I will set the CSS. So I will use a, an identifier, in this case the class is dot main container, we can go back in here, main container. Just like in CSS, the dot signifies it's a class dot main container set the CSS width to this width and this is our variable here now why have I put it all in a function it's the same for the rest I put it all in a function because I'll call that function at the very start and then I'm saying in, J in jQuery every time the window resizes call this function again so that means I can drag the window and it actually builds it up so we have our actual view. What we don't have, interestingly enough, is the right CSS on our menu there. So I don't know why I haven't picked up the correct CSS for the menu. So let's go back and have a quick look at that. Um, the ULs, it's a menu. Okay. So we need to look at the CSS. And in our CSS, we want to look at menu item. So menu item, 
it isn't there. It's got the nav UL LI, which will pick up the LIs and the ULs. Um, so let's go color, um, and we want to make it white, which is hash FFF. And there's our menu. So that's fine. It's all working. We're at a point now where we can start diving in to the PHP. So we know that PHP is running. We know that we have a site for Tutorial 11. Um, and now we want to create some programs that will run when we turn these into either hrefs or clickable buttons or a form of some kind. Okay, I'm going to pause it there. That's enough for part two. And we'll pick it up in part three and start writing some PHP.